In 2003, LucasArts released Star Wars Galaxies, which ended up becoming one of the best MMOs ever made. But despite the game developing a cult-like following and still having thousands of hardcore fans to this day, you've probably never even heard of it. So what happened to Star Wars Galaxies, and how did a game that had the potential to be the biggest and best Star Wars game ever made die? Well, as always, we gotta start at the very beginning. Star Wars is a media powerhouse, a true force to be reckoned with, no pun intended. So, of course, there have been dozens of attempts at making high-quality Star Wars games over time. Beginning in the 1980s, LucasArts Entertainment partnered with various developers to release Star Wars games on consoles like the Atari and NES. These games were pretty casual, and none of them were that impressive. But in the late 1990s, things would change with the rise of the first MMOs, games like EverQuest and Ultima Online. These games were pioneering an entirely new type of experience, so it comes as no surprise that LucasArts saw the potential of what could be done with a true Star Wars MMO. Many Star Wars fans had spent their entire lives dreaming of living out their own space adventures, and an MMO was an opportunity to make those dreams a reality. The exact executives at LucasArts realized that they had the money, fan base, and setting to make something truly great. However, they also knew that they couldn't accomplish their goals alone. The project that they had in mind was far beyond any game they've made so far. They reached out to Sony Online Entertainment, or SOE, a studio involved with the development of EverQuest for development assistance. SOE agreed to join the project, and a powerful partnership was formed. So in 2000, LucasArts announced the upcoming release of their new game, Star Wars Galaxies, and stated that the game would be ready in a mere one year. Players were, of course, hyped. Many factors drove the excitement for the project, the anticipation of the new MMO MMO genre, the promise of a short wait for the full release of the game, and the pre-existing love of the Star Wars universe. Players knew that in a matter of months, they'd be flying through the galaxy, having lightsaber battles, and living out adventures they dreamed of since they were kids. I mean, how could they not be excited? It seemed like the perfect game. But beneath the surface, while development was going on, things weren't as good as they seemed. The development cycle itself was rocky, painful, and slow. Features were getting scrapped left and right, and developers were slogging through 15 hours crunch days as the project fell more and more behind schedule. Working conditions weren't great, but there were also some fundamental design issues that were causing things to take longer than expected. Remember, these were the early days of MMOs, and the formula required to make a lasting one was something that many developers still didn't understand. They had a vision, but accomplishing that vision was going to be harder than it looked. The sprawling sandbox design that they were trying to make intended to empower players with limitless freedom, but quickly became a logistic nightmare to balance and maintain. The complex crafting and economic systems designed to simulate a living, breathing Star Wars galaxy were prone to exploitation and instability, and often needed to be redesigned. And the focus on non-combat professions and social interactions, while innovative, alienated players seeking a more traditional MMO experience centered around combat and progression. Leveraging the immense popularity of the Star Wars universe should have been a recipe for success for LucasArts and SOE, but the way of the franchise's legacy proved to be a double-edged sword. Lucasfilm, fiercely protective of their intellectual property, exercised tight control over the game's narrative and design, rejecting any elements that deviated from the established lore or potentially misrepresented beloved characters. Navigating the vast Star Wars universe with its intricate timeline and interconnected storylines posed an additional challenge. The choice of setting alone was a major factor that the studio had to consider. Placing the game after the original trilogy risked contradicting future Star Wars projects or undermining the established ending. Setting it during the events of the films would inherently limit player freedom and narrative possibilities, as key events and characters couldn't be altered. Ultimately, they decided that the setting should take place directly after the events of Episode 4, A New Hope, and this decision had major ramifications for the development team and began a conflict with the higher-ups that would last for the entirety of the game's life and ultimately be a contributing factor to its downfall. The issue involves the Jedi, or lack thereof. During the original trilogy, Jedi are rare, mostly forgotten, and dying out, so any game set during this time period shouldn't have very many Jedi running around. It just wouldn't make any sense. Yet the reality is that when people buy a Star Wars video game, they want to have a lightsaber, use the force, and have fun space battles. Otherwise, what's the point? So to combat this problem, the team had a creative solution. They decided on a system in which every player would have to complete a randomized list of five activities in order to unlock the force. 
These would be unique and unknown to each player, and the idea was that the players would focus on getting invested in the world, and then naturally awaken the Force. On one hand, this was a super cool concept. The Jedi are supposed to feel mysterious and spiritual, and this mechanic mirrored that sentiment. However, from a marketing and gameplay perspective, this was a frustrating idea for the dev team to work around. MMOs are often pitched as a chance to be the hero in your own story, but this mechanic would guarantee that the vast majority of people would be mere background characters. Because of this, there was a lot of pressure on the broader role-playing mechanisms to carry the game. Since Star Wars Galaxies couldn't rely on the allure of playing as the Jedi, the rest of the gameplay had to be engaging enough for players to get invested. And of course, this was a huge obstacle. So in short, Star Wars Galaxies had a lot of potential from the start, but if it wasn't perfect, the entire fanbase would be extremely disappointed. So the conflict on how to handle Jedi, as well as many other nuanced topics, were discussed often during development. The team had to reflect on the identity of not just Star Wars Galaxies, but Star Wars itself. What was it that made the universe so enthralling to so many people, and how could they do it justice in this game? They had one shot, and they needed everything to go smoothly to ensure that the game didn't just survive, but that it truly thrived. In the end, the development team ended up requesting an extra six months to figure all of this stuff out and work through these problems. But this request was denied, and instead, they were given only a couple extra months to have the game ready for the beta. So on April 15th, 2003, after a long and painful development cycle, Star Wars Galaxies was finally released to excited fans. But things, again, weren't as perfect as they should have been. Originally, LucasArts had intended to release console versions for the Xbox and PlayStation 2, but this idea had to be scrapped and the game was only released on PC. And at launch, many key features were missing and were supposed to come out with regular updates that would come after the initial release. Vehicles, rideable creatures, and some of the more intricate housing features weren't presented upon release, and the game was also incredibly buggy. And somehow, despite all of these issues, Star Wars Galaxies was surprisingly good. It offered complex crafting, a variety of roles for players to take up, and many avenues for role-playing. Rather than just having solid classes, players had many skills and could freely spend skill points in a variety of professions. The game was designed so that players would naturally rely on each other and affected each other's gameplay. If you wanted to heal from a serious injury, you needed the help of a medic. If you wanted food to give you buffs, you needed a chef. If you wanted a new gun, it was easiest to buy it from another player. Having so many in-game roles, filled by players rather than NPCs, encouraged people to form their own communities, and the game instantly came alive unlike any other MMOs that were on the market. It was a game that allowed players to really feel like they were living and contributing in a growing independent community. What the devs were trying to accomplish was something pretty different from the typical MMO experience. No, most players wouldn't become powerful Jedi and fight in crazy battles, but they were still able to feel important and like they impacted the world through their relations with other players. The people who were open to an experience centered on role-playing and making their own fun, rather than a linear handcrafted experience, were treated to an amazing game, and Star Wars Galaxies was truly awesome. It seemed as if the developers had absolutely nailed it, and that this game would be the biggest thing of the early 2000s. And things only got better in the initial months after launch. One of the most exciting moments in Star Wars Galaxies history occurred four months after its launch, when on November 7th, someone was finally finally able to awaken the Force and become a Jedi, the first in the entire game. This player released a guide of every action that they took so that others could try to gain access to the Force as well, and it was a super exciting time for the community. Before this, players had little understanding of how the Force worked and how to pursue it. But now, with a new hope for the future of the game, tons of new players immersed themselves in their guilds and professions and committed themselves to this game for the long run. There was a mystique and secrecy surrounding the Force that made it far more compelling than a typical power up in an MMO, and many players loved it. And by the end of its first year, Star Wars Galaxies seemed to have a bright future. It was a unique experience that truly stood out from other MMOs. It had one of the most engaged and dedicated communities of role players in any game available, and it still had room to improve and grow. This was a game that, with decent updates, could last for many years to come. But in 2005, higher-ups would begin to push the dev team to take the game in a new direction, and it would result in the destruction of its reputation and player base in a matter of months. Almost every idea that made the game unique and interesting was abandoned or watered down, and somehow, this awesome game that made over $16.1 million 
Spoilers at release, was reduced to ashes quicker than the Death Star in Episode 4. So what happened, and how did LucasArts destroy their own masterpiece? Well, it starts with an entirely different game. On November 23rd, 2004, World of Warcraft was released. As we all know, World of Warcraft was a near-instant success. There wasn't a single other MMO that could compete with it. Immediately, the executives at LucasArts felt threatened and were concerned that they would lose players to World of Warcraft and that Star Wars Galaxies would quickly become irrelevant. This prompted them to demand that the devs at SOE change the game to be more palatable to casual fans. At this time, Star Wars Galaxies was one of a kind, but LucasArts didn't want something special. They wanted something profitable. So it was obvious what features had to be changed. If the game was to reach mass appeal, they needed to make sure that everyone had access to the most appealing things, the Jedis. As a result, they implemented the Holocron system. Holocrons were incredibly rare items that would give you a hint on what profession you needed to unlock to get the Force. They were a fairly simple item, but they entirely broke the mysterious Jedi system that everyone had been invested in since day one. The secrecy of how to get the Force was the point and the reason that it felt special and fun. Once that was reduced to grinding for new items and then grinding for whatever profession you were told to master from the item, the magic was gone. Players weren't just exploring the world and naturally finding the Force. The entire game became a mad dash for holocrons. Entire guilds of people split apart, players abandoned professions that they did for fun, and few roleplayed for the sake of it anymore. Everyone wanted to be a Jedi, even if it meant sucking all of the fun out of the game. This was already really bad, but Star Wars Galaxies took another hit on April 27th, 2005 when the combat upgrade was released. The combat update wasn't a bad idea in concept because the combat in Star Wars Galaxies had been broken for years. In fact, there were rumors that SOE was privately testing a revamped combat system that a few veteran players had enjoyed. However, that revamped system was abandoned for a far more simplified version clearly meant to copy World of Warcraft. The intention was that this new system would be more balanced and approachable for new players. However, players hated it. Firstly, they resented the change to a completely different playstyle. These people originally played Star Wars Galaxies because they wanted to play Star Wars Galaxies, not a worse version of World of Warcraft. Secondly, many weapons were taken out of the game or changed. The game automatically converted players' old weapons and armor to fit the new system, but oftentimes these changes weren't fair and left players with gear that felt far worse than what they started with. This was a slap in the face to veteran players who essentially watched hours of progress and work go up in smoke all in service of a mediocre combat system meant to cater to casuals at the expense of loyal, older fans. It seems as if LucasArts did a lot of things that were a slap in the face to their most hardcore fans while trying to pander to casual players that would like a game like World of Warcraft. These changes certainly caused a level of broken trust and hostility from hardcore players towards LucasArts, and some players dropped the game entirely. However, the new combat system did succeed in making the game more palatable to newer players, and many new people started playing the game. I mean, even some older players grew to appreciate some of the improvements and stuck with it. So it appeared that Star Wars Galaxies had made several missteps, but there was still room to salvage the situation. But well, LucasArts ruined that pretty quickly. Back in 2003, November represented a peak for Star Wars Galaxies, but in 2005, it represented rock bottom. On November 15th, the new game enhancements update was released. This patch was essentially the devs entirely surrendering to pressures to copy World of Warcraft. The skill and profession system was simplified into a basic class system. The flexibility and customization of the old one were gone. Even more insulting, becoming a Jedi had just become a class. To awaken the Force, you didn't need to explore, immerse yourself in the world, or even collect the holocrons that we mentioned before. You just needed to select the right class. The complicated crafting system was also simplified. Pretty much everything that made Star Wars Galaxies unique was instantly scrapped. The sandbox, role-playing focused gameplay was morphed into a far more basic loot, kill, level up progression system. Veteran players hated this change and began unsubscribing in mass. They felt frustrated and betrayed. Not only had the game completely changed and yet again erased all of their progress and effort, but it just wasn't fun anymore. To be fair, there were newer fans that did like this update, but they liked it because it made Star Wars Galaxies play like every other basic MMO. Veteran players had to accept that the game they'd fallen in love with was dead for good. For the next several years, Star Wars Galaxies would slowly decline in player count. The game took the most massive hit when players quit in response to this update. However, after the initial sharp negative reaction, things stabilized and players began to drift away from the game more slowly. Although Star Wars Galaxies was still losing quite a bit of players, it also gained some as well. It seemed as if the game would still continue to have a future, even though it was smaller than originally anticipated. 
updated. The new players who started playing the game after this update didn't have the older versions of the game to compare it to, so they could appreciate the current version for what it was. These newer fans, along with a few loyal veteran players, did manage to keep Star Wars Galaxies alive. However, it quickly became clear that things were declining and that the game would eventually die. In December of 2009, LucasArts and SOE shut down 12 of the 25 servers, and four years later, they would close the remaining servers, officially killing the game. But how did they survive for that additional four-year period when things were already bad enough to close half of their servers? Well, it's kind of complicated, and it seems as if they pulled the plug while the game did still have some active players. The contract between SOE and LucasArts was set to end the following year in 2012. This meant that as the contract expired, SOE would lose the rights to use the Star Wars IP, and without access to licensing, even the best update in the world couldn't save Star Wars Galaxies. The game's decline and negative player sentiment made it extremely unlikely that LucasArts would be willing to negotiate an extension for this contract. While things were bad with Star Wars Galaxies, LucasArts hadn't given up on making a successful Star Wars MMO. In 2005, while Star Wars Galaxies began to struggle, the company partnered with BioWare to begin work on a new MMO that would learn from the failures of their first attempt. And by 2011, the same year that the remaining servers were shut down for Star Wars Galaxies, LucasArts' priority was now releasing and promoting this new game, and not worrying about a nearly 10-year-old game that was in decline. And additionally, shutting down Star Wars Galaxies would push the remaining players to try out Star Wars The Old Republic. On December 13th, 2011, Star Wars The Old Republic was launched. And two days later, Star Wars Galaxy's servers were closed for good. In the end, some of the devs who'd worked on the game would admit that the panic over World of Warcraft that caused the massive decline was likely an overreaction. Compared to other MMOs, Star Wars Galaxies lost very few players to the Juggernaut. They were very different games that appealed to very different players. If Star Wars Galaxies had continued building on its systems and content, it could have continued to thrive. So by pandering to World of Warcraft, not only did the game die, but it died for no good reason reason because that game wasn't a competition to begin with. Star Wars Galaxy's legacy lives on in modern MMOs, as it was one of the first games to focus on a more player-oriented role-playing experience. Beyond that, some fans still play the game to this day through emulators. You can say a lot about the flaws of Star Wars Galaxies, but the fact that people are still playing a 20-year-old game today just shows how impactful it was. Despite how its story ended, Star Wars Galaxies more than earned its title as one of the best MMOs ever made. You can actually still play this game today Day by supporting some fan-made projects. I found two online, one of which is Star Wars Galaxies Legends, and the other of which is Star Wars Galaxies Restoration. I don't really know the difference between these, I haven't actually played them, but these are two options if you still want to check out this amazing game. I'll link both of them in the description, I always love supporting fan-made projects, so if you want to play it, check them out, you can find the link below. Also, I just made a Discord for the first time in like six years, which is a pretty big deal to me because I've basically distanced myself from all other social media. I deleted my Twitter, I don't use my Instagram, and basically every other form of non-YouTube social media for me has been completely removed from the internet. Uh, I wanted to try this again, so I made this Discord. It's really simple. It doesn't have a bunch of other stuff like a lot of other YouTuber Discords have. It's kind of just a place to chat with the community, to recommend video ideas, talk about games that died or failed, or some of my favorite games. Again, a really casual place, so if you're interested in stuff like that, feel free to join it. I think it'll be a good time, and I look forward to seeing you over there. Have you ever played Star Wars Galaxies? What were your thoughts on it? Do you think it had a lot more potential than the developers gave it? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video essay. I will see you guys next time, and peace.